안녕하세요 매일매일 운동하기를 실천하고 있는 동탄 왕코입니다 음 다시 집에 왔습니다 제주도에서 방금 도착을 했고요 지금 오후 한 5시 살짝 넘어가고 있는데 운동을 해야 됩니다 근데 제가 또 약속이 있어요 바로 나가야 됩니다 술을 먹을 것 같아요 약속 갔다 오고 나서 운동을 못 하겠죠 일단은 오늘 오전에 제가 오후 비행기 타고 왔는데 오전에 수영을 했습니다 거기 호텔 리조트에 있는 수영장에서 수영을 해가지고 <웃음> 운동을 했어요 했다고 칠게요 아 종아리 알이 베겨가지고 아 서핑도 너무 힘들고 <웃음> 몸이 안 따라갑니다 몸이 안 따라가 일단은 팔굽혀펴기랑 간단하게 할게요 또 나가야 돼서 짐도 풀고 운동하고 저녁 맛있게 먹겠습니다 아 종아리 아. weekend they hope that people have learned their lessons since then there have been a number of closures a number of restrictions but ultimately health officials say what it's going to come down to is people taking the advice of health officials practicing social distancing and of course wearing a face covering jason carroll cnn new york Florida's Miami-Dade County has now imposed a curfew in a bid to keep people off the streets. The mayor spoke with CNN's Jim Shuto about why oh. a curfew became necessary. We had sanitation. We had all rules oh. that were put together with our infection control doctors that they, said, they told us, look, if the people follow these steps and these rules, the likelihood of yeah. uh, contagion is low. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, especially the young, uh, mm. did not follow these rules. And that's why we had this sharp rise in the young, which then infected some other people. And that's why we had this uh, increase in cases of uh, COVID-19 in our hospitals. So, so you talk about the two simple rules there, right? Mask wearing and social distance. The president tonight is yeah. holding an event, again, without required mask wearing, without social distancing. Does that hurt your efforts to try to save lives there in Miami to have the, to have the commander in chief not be willing to follow those rules or ask people well, at his events to do that well look uh, what I've said before about uh, what the president does is he needs to follow what local rules are I don't know what the local rules are in, uh, in South Dakota I would expect that there why should they be local way, way rules if those us. rules ever there's not a health expert in this country who doesn't say wear a mask and social distance yeah, except that in South Dakota, I think they had 85 cases in the entire state yesterday. And so uh, they have different I rules in uh, different in Tulsa, states. And so Tulsa, even, even, in the, even, in the, even in the state of Florida, they have, you know, we have counties with much less. And that's why the governor has allowed us uh, local leaders to uh, make rules uh, that are in excess of what he's got in place and that's what we've done in Miami-Dade, Broward and Palm Beach counties. We we're a lot stricter here because the cases that we have here are much higher than the rest of the state and and so uh, you don't want to see leadership from the president you know I know you're trying to say you're trying to do your best to save life you don't want to see leadership from the president say you know what I'm taking this simple step I'm wearing a mask and keep yourself safe here even as you come to watch me speak you, you don't want that kind of leadership if uh, he comes to uh, Miami-Dade County, I would expect that he wears uh, the mask because that's what we make him do down here. Joining me now is Dr. Richard Dogwood. He's medical director at Fleet Street Clinic in London. We appreciate you coming on. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. Happy 4th of July. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, we will wait and see if this fourth holiday weekend causes more spikes. Meantime, as we heard, cases hit record-breaking highs in the U.S. this week. What do you make of these numbers? 50,000 new cases for the third straight day. Deaths are down from April. That is positive. The cases are up. As you see it, doctor, why does the United States have it so bad? Well, these numbers are obviously very alarming, and I think they reflect the sort of non-uniform situation that you see in the U.S., the fact that uh, New York is over the uh, worst of it and, and, and cases are in decline, whereas they're rising elsewhere. Um, it's 
quite easy to p- predict the behavior of the virus. What's much harder to wow. do is to predict the uh, behavior of people because that's really what's going to uh, dictate spread from now on. And it's really the individual um, and uh, public health precautions oh. that we follow that c- it, it is, it is really for now until we have a vaccine or any other kind of magic bullet. That is the only way that the uh, spread of the virus can be controlled. And it really is going to take some very determined action to reduce a uh, person's personal oh. spread before this can be brought under control. And I appreciate the frustration that everybody feels. We've had the same thing in the UK. Everybody feels that they've had enough of this virus, they've had enough of lockdown, they want to get out and do what they want to do. They don't want to let anything oh. get in their way. But the consequence of that behavior is going to be uh, to facilitate spread. And, uh, you know, we could see even bigger at the moment in some parts of the country, cases are rising pretty exponentially. We're going to see some really big numbers unless drastic measures are taken in the places where those case numbers are rising to, uh, to intervene and to stop person-to-person spread. Well, top member of the Trump campaign, Donald Trump Jr.'s girlfriend, has tested positive for COVID before the president's South Dakota July 4th speech. Thousands packed that event, doctor. Money without masks, sitting side by side. The seats were even zip-tied together per fire code. What are the risks of these types of events? people clustered together like this that the president is holding? Well, it it is highly risky and and, and dangerous. Um, Broadly, outdoor events are usually safer than indoor. There's much less shared space. But when you put people together in very close contact uh, like that, and when you consider how people arrive at such events, what they do before, during, after, that really boils down to a pretty risky uh, in, in environment. And especially when um, people are being encouraged to sort of thumb their noses at the risk. They're, you know, they're being told that it's okay not to do any of these uh, public health measures, not to you know, wear a face covering. I'm not sure how much hand hygiene there is or how much uh, you know, true uh, buy-in there is to the importance of social distancing. This is a disease that spe- spreads efficiently and effectively from person to person. Well, England is ready to start reopening in a few hours, including its famed pubs. They've been closed down for three months. So what can we expect? The Prime Minister cautions people, and we'll have a live report about it. home to a roster of tech leaders who have fundamentally changed the way we live. It just kicks up my feet. From electronics to entertainment, food and fashion. These are wild. This month, meet some of the biggest names in tech. Innovation is, is our job. Plus, take a rare look inside one of the world's most secure research labs. Let's hit the road. <laughs> Let's hit the road. Innovate South Korea. This weekend on CNN. As the global economy grinds to a halt, many businesses are springing into action to support those affected by COVID-19. 
With protective equipment in short supply, clothing brand Mango is turning its attention from the catwalk to the healthcare crisis. It has currently donated 2 million face masks to the Spanish Ministry of Health and is manufacturing 13,000 medical gowns. And Beiersdorf, the company behind Nivea and Coppertone, has pledged nearly $55 million to support COVID-19 relief efforts. The donation will consist of disinfectant, skin care products, and financial aid. And with live concerts canceled for the foreseeable future, Spotify is matching public donations dollar for dollar, up to a total contribution of $10 million. The donations support a range of charities for musicians in need. For more stories of the people making a difference and to find out how you can impact your world, go to CNN.com slash impact. after George Floyd's death. As protests continue, a moment of reflection. Will race relations really change this time? Fareed talks to a panel of top historians. Fareed Zakaria, GPS, Sunday on CNN. Pubs and restaurants across England are reopening their doors for the first time since coronavirus forced them to close in March. Prince William was among the first to be able to grab a pint. He enjoyed some cider to mark the occasion. And as others look to fill their local pubs, the British Prime Minister is offering this advice. Enjoy summer safely. I mean, just I, I do want people to feel that it's uh, safe to go and enjoy themselves, to enjoy hospitality. But it's got to be done in a responsible way. If not, oh, I do the rule. says the risks oh, are there. Oh, I'm really afraid that the risks are absolutely manifest in uh, other I'll countries that we know so. and love well, where where you know there are, there are difficulties, and we've got to we've got to look at that and think. We don't want to go down that route. Will people heed that advice today? Well, CNN Salma Abdelaziz joins me now live from London, where more businesses are about to reopen. Hi, Salma. Hello, Natalie. We're inside a hair salon. It's a little too early for the pubs, but the hair salons, as you can see around me here, are oh. already full. I want to introduce you to Diana. She's one of the managers here. Diana, sorry to get you right in the middle of your work. Tell me what are some of the changes that you've had to make.